Hey, good morning. Happy Sunday to you. We are on day three of our Pray the Psalms through the month of May. And uh, as we um, move forward going through the Psalms, and today we're going to look at Psalm 5, I think it's important just to reflect a little bit now that we've been doing this uh, for a couple days, why praying scripture can be so helpful. And I just jotted down some notes of thoughts I had, but I think for me, one of the benefits of praying through scripture is it helps me to recenter my prayers. Oftentimes, I feel like my prayers can become very selfish. It's a it's a list of wants and needs, but scripture forces me to consider other things. S- specifically, one is to see God um, and who he is, to see the attributes of him, to, to remember um, what he's done, uh, what he's doing, what he will do for us. It also helps um, to move our prayers beyond the wants and needs of ourselves and those that we love. Not that those are wrong. We'll see today in Psalm 5 that, that he prays, the psalmist prays uh, in the morning um, with his needs. But, but it helps develop our prayers beyond that as well. And then for me, finally, it helps us to consider things we're just not thinking about. Um, so just kind of broadening our scope with our mind of what we can be praying for, what we should be praying for, um, to see the needs of others, to see the bigger picture in our life. So I hope that you've got the prayer journal, you've downloaded it. If you need a copy, I can get you one. Uh, just contact me through the post, send a DM. But let me read Psalm 5 and then uh, we'll pray through it. O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning I bring my request to you and wait expectantly. O God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the sins of the wicked. Therefore, the proud may not stand in your presence, for you hate all who do evil. You will destroy those who tell lies. The Lord detests murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, I can enter your house. I will worship at your temple with deepest awe. Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make your way plain for me to follow. Your enemies, my enemies, cannot speak a truthful word. Their deepest desire is to to destroy others. Their talk is foul like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with flattery. O God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own traps. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Now we get to the reflection questions for me. One of the words or words that stood out for me were really from verse 7. It was unfailing love and worship. Uh, When I read through this, those two words just kind of jumped off the page at me. Um, And I think about unfailing love. That's God's unfailing love to us. It never fails. My response, our proper response to that should be worship um, with the deepest of awe. So his actions toward me that I receive are unfailing love. How I can respond and should respond is with worship. This psalm, when I read it and consider it, what's something I can be thankful for? It's that unfailing love. It's that he loves me unconditionally and loves me no matter where he finds me and loves me enough to help me to move forward, to draw closer to him. What's something that I need to confess? I need to confess at times that I need forgiveness for taking my own path. Verse eight makes it clear, uh, the psalmist is praying, Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. And the Lord's path is always the right path. It's the safest path for us to be on. Make your way plain for me to follow. I need to see it, God. Sometimes I just need you to open my eyes to see your path. And then I need a faithful obedience to follow it where you're leading. What is something I can ask God for? Um, To help my worship for him. To be as consistent as it can be. Considering his unfailing love is completely consistent towards me. So I just want my worship to be as consistent as it can. So let me read you my prayer that 
I have in my journal today. Father, thank you for hearing my cries for help. You're the only one I come to. You are my Lord and my King. May I start each day by coming to you, waiting patiently and expectantly for your response. You are a righteous God who hates all evil and wickedness. Help me to despise evil as well. Thank you for your unfailing love. Because of your love for me, I can join you where you are. Because of your unfailing love, I will worship you with the deepest awe. Your path is right and safe for me. Continue to lead me and help me to follow. Forgive me for the times that I've made my own path apart from yours. You are the judge. You declare the guilt and innocence of each of us. May we find redemption and forgiveness in Jesus. You, God, are my refuge. Let me sing joyful praises to you forever. May you protect me and fill me with joy and to all who love your name. You are the one who brings blessings to me. You surround me with your shield of love. May your goodness toward me continue to impress on my heart and draw me closer to you. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray this to you. Amen. So I hope that this psalm will help you develop your prayer back to him. Allow him to speak to you with those words that kind of got your attention. Allow your mind to be open to the other things apart from what we're, we're coming to the prayer uh, kind of table with uh, to allow him to broaden the scope of things we consider to see God as he is and how we are and then to be able to offer a prayer to him to take the word of God to change us to convert it back to a prayer back so I encourage you with this look forward to seeing you tomorrow